Hey, Congressman Blake Farenthold joins us on the program tonight. Good evening, Representative. How you doing, sir? I am doing just great. Well, it's good talking to you again. By the way, uh, happy happy birthday to you. Uh, yesterday, I turned the big five zero. Wow. How you feeling about that? Well, I feel a day over 50. <laughs> well, listen, I'm glad that you could uh, join us tonight. There is a lot to talk about. Uh, you know, as I understand it, uh, Dennis Burke was uh, in, in D.C. today, former U.S. attorney for Phoenix, Arizona, uh, a guy heavily involved in Fast and Furious and the Justice Department's initial response to uh, congressional inquiries. Now, as I understand it, this hearing was, was behind closed doors, right? So we don't really know what, uh, what it was that Mr. Burke had to say. No, I, I wasn't in, I was not invited to that one, so we're, I'm not completely sure what's going on, but I imagine I will be getting a briefing on it in the next day or two. Okay, yeah, you know, and it's interesting, as I understand it, uh, Mr. Burke, this is his second appearance, the, the, the first time, I guess he, he got uh, ill and, and the, and the uh, interview had to be cut short. Well, I'd I say I might be getting a little nauseous if I were having to talk <laughs> about some of the things they were going on in Fast and Furious myself. Uh, absolutely right. You know, you, you were there for the Attorney General's uh, uh, quizzing uh, last week before the House Judiciary uh, Committee. I was. They tried to get me uh, up, on the, uh, up on the podium, but uh, apparently not all the Democrat members realized I was actually a member of Congress. I, uh, I, was, I wasn't going to bring that up, but... Uh, <laughs> now you... There's an app for that. <laughs> Who are you? I mean, now... As I understand, you have 435 members of Congress. I think that you guys would all know each other by now. Oh, uh, you know, I was I was actually going through the app on the iPhone, <laughs> uh, looking looking at the pictures, seeing how many I couldn't identify. So I have a little bit of sympathy. Well, you were there. What did you think about uh, what Eric Holder had to say last week? Well, the, the, the man is so slippery. Uh, you know, he, he makes a lawyer proud. Not <laughs> the ability to not answer a question. Yeah, yeah. You've been law school for years to learn that. Well, yes. It's a talent. <laughs> were there were there any particularly uh, interesting exchanges you thought where the uh, the attorney general had wiggled out of, of, of providing a, a clear answer that you really wanted to hear? Well, yeah, I actually don't think the Judiciary Committee was as hard on uh, on Mr. Holder as we are in the Government Oversight Reform Committee, though we do uh, share a few members like uh, Trey Gowdy and, uh, and, and, of course, our chairman, Daryl Issa, is on there. And you, you could see him squirm when Issa was questioning him. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I thought was really interesting was this exchange about uh, emails uh, from Representative Issa when he he asked, uh, you know, well, do you have a personal email account? And and he, he uh, Attorney General Holder first said, well, I, I have a government account. And, well, do you have a personal? Yeah, account? I, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I do. Was, okay. You know, it was it was it was really interesting. And and, and Issa pointed out, you know, of the five thousand plus documents that we've received, not one of them has been an email from you. So. Have you ever communicated on uh, about Fast and Furious via email? And he never answered. He never answered yeah. that question. Well, you know, there there are a couple of things that you learn early on. I'm a I'm a recovering lawyer. Uh, you know, I was a lawyer about twenty years. I guess I, I was actually admitted to the bar twenty years ago. Practiced for about nine years before I started my own business. But there are a couple of things that you you learn as a lawyer. Uh, one of which is the cover up gets you every time. And the other one is the smoking gun is always in uh, the email. Uh huh. So is this an area of inquiry you think the uh, House Oversight and Government Reform Committee is going to continue uh, to pursue? I, I do. And, you know, one of the things about email, because you know, I'm a techno geek, and I actually taught uh, the electronic uh, mail and discovery to, to lawyers and continuing education yeah. seminars. and. You know, I, one of the lines I gave long ago was, you know, if you want to keep something a secret, you have two choices. You can either uh, print it out in a memo and make about 50 copies and distribute it, or you can send it by email. And you <laughs> have a better chance of getting rid of the 50 hard copies of something than you do an email with the automatic backups and, uh, you know, all the people that it goes to and the ability to send it. So uh, you always, when you're investigating something, you need to look at the emails, and uh, as I said earlier, the smoking gun is almost always an email. How how easy would it be if, uh, let's say, Eric Holder communicated only via a private email? Uh, how, how easy would that be for your committee to get a hold of those documents? Well, you know that that the government email is much easier to get. There are procedures for that, mm. but there are also procedures for getting uh, uh, getting a hold of the private emails as well. And 
you know, as Mr. Holder starts to duck behind some of these things he was talking about, executive uh, executive privilege and the like, uh, as as was pointed out in the committee hearing, Congress's power, uh, should we decide to pursue something like impeachment, is plenary. We can get almost anything then. Yeah, because, you know, it, it, it was interesting how the attorney general uh, just kept going back to, well, I mean, we're just we're just we're, we're going above and beyond tradition. Uh, what 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 DOJ has traditionally provided Congress. Uh, but as Representative Issa pointed out, he never once cited any any sort of authority to withhold the documents that have been requested. Again, it, 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 it's really a shame. It wasn't as obvious as when the Solyndra people were testifying and claiming the Fifth Amendment. But really, if you look at Holder's testimony, you say, wow, this guy kind of is lawyering up here. Well, yeah, I, I especially by the end of the uh, the committee hearing, when we had gone through three rounds of, of testimony and the, the answers from the attorney general were starting to get repeated. But, you know, we also saw, the, the I think, real flashes of annoyance uh, from the attorney general. And he, he once again, you know, he tried to say that this was all just uh, basically a, a Republican uh, uh, witch hunt. Uh, what's your response to that? You're a public servant. You're working under a president who vowed to have the most transparent administration in history, and you're ducking and dodging. I want you to do me a personal favor. If you ever hear me ducking and dodging like that, I want you to come <laughs> hunt me down, kick me in the butt, and say <laughs> it's time to quit running uh, for office and resign. All right, I, I, I can do that for you, Representative. Um, listen, I really appreciate you coming on the program. Uh, let me know before we uh, let you go, what, what's the next step? I, I know that Representative Issa uh, mentioned hearings in January for the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Is that the next time we'll see any, any sort of uh, legislative committee action on Fast and Furious? I suspect so, and, and we're going to continue to probe and try to get a hold of the documents uh, and the email. Realistically, uh, again, in any investigation, it, it, it's the evidence, the, the hard evidence, email, documents, and things like that that are really the most important. The, the actual vocal testimony uh, of witnesses, that's a piece of it, but really the, the cases are won and lost with the uh, scientific or uh, documentative evidence. To that end, are, are you guys still getting um, a lot of cooperation from third-party witnesses, in other words, people outside of, of the government that uh, congressional investigators are talking to? One of the one of our best tools, whether it's fast and furious or anything that we are doing um, in the government oversight and reform committee, is through whistleblowers. And I want to encourage anybody who knows of wrongdoing in the government uh, to go to the government oversight and reform committee's website. And there's a tab on there for whistleblowers. And uh, we would love to hear from you, and we would love to uh, investigate. We are the watchdogs of the government, and uh, we rely on public interest groups, government employees, uh, and just the folks in general to point out uh, when they know the government is doing something wrong. All right. Well, listen, Congressman, again, uh, thanks for joining us on the program. Enjoy your uh, birthday celebration. Uh, have you had your big party yet, or is that coming up this weekend? No, we, 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 we had a little uh, party in Corpus Christi, which is my hometown, uh, over the weekend, and then we have had my office staff up at the party room uh, at my condominium last night. So the birthday celebration uh, is over. we got to make it up to my daughter. Uh, she was born on my 30th birthday, so we share a birthday. Uh, we got to do a little something for her now. I'm out of the spotlight. It's Amanda's turn. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Congressman, it's always a real pleasure having you on the show, and uh, look forward to doing this again very soon. Thanks. Congressman Blake Farenthold joining us from the great state of Texas tonight here on NRANews.com and Sirius XM Patriot.